everybody, and welcome back to The Poor Man's Chemist. In this video, we are going to revisit the Kratom extraction and talk a little bit about the principles of acid-base extractions, since this is a topic that seems to be confusing to a lot of people out there. Um, I have, and I mean, and this has been going on ever since I put those videos about Kratom extraction online the first time, where people clearly do not understand. I mean, just go look at the comments on those videos if you can stomach them. Um, I mean, some of them are very good, don't get me wrong, you know. I'm, I'm making a generalization, and there are always exceptions to every generalization. We all know this. Um, so, you know, I mean, but a lot of them are just dumb. There's no other word for them. Um, so, anyway, I, I, I thought that this was a good topic to revisit. Um, I'm also doing this demo for a few people out there in particular. Um, I don't know you, but hi, I'm the guy that's, you know, gave you the protocol for the Kratom extraction. Um, I'm doing this video so that y'all can see it, um, since, you know, I, I, your questions were passed along to me. Um, yeah, yeah, guys, the, the extraction of Kratom is very, very different from the extraction that you would do with, like, cannabis. Um, I mean, to my understanding, you know, cannabis extraction involves a lot of stuff like supercritical carbon dioxide extractions and whatnot because there are no alkaloids in cannabis that you're extracting. Um, yeah, THC is not an alkaloid. I think some people don't understand this. Um, so anyway, you know, yeah, I understand. It, it, it's very, very different because with Kratom, you're dealing with alkaloids. Um, but really, the principles of acid-base extraction of alkaloids are really very simple, y'all. It really, really is. It always follows the same basic process, okay? You take some plant matter, you mix it with an acidified media, a pH of 4 is generally a good rule of thumb, okay? I have found doing kratom extractions that 4 is good in particular for kratom. You might be if you have more analytical capability than I. I have no instrumentation here. This is my little lab at home that I've built with like my paycheck and some viewer don recently viewer donations. Um, I mean, over the last like you know year I think or so, not not even that long. Um, and while my viewers are very generous, thank you guys, I love you. Um, I mean, you know, my capabilities here are limited. Uh, I mean, the only in analytical technique I've got that I can use is TLC, and TLC here is not going to be meaningful because you're not going to be able to get the separation across a TLC plate of however fucking many alkaloids are in this kratom i mean it contains like i've read papers where it says like, like 30 or 40 or maybe it's up to more now not all samples of kratom contain the same alkaloids and then they do it's not always in the same proportions it is incredibly variable um once again, I've never been able to get a clear answer as to whether or not this was figured out. Like, because the last I had heard, and granted, this was a long time, you know, many years ago, but like kratom trees they tried to grow in like Florida didn't produce any of the opioid alkaloids. I don't know. I mean, this is just something that I had read at the time. I don't know. I just remember that this was a difficulty in people being able to cultivate kratom for, you know, human use outside of like southeast asia uh, i would imagine given the amount of money involved in this man that somebody has to have figured this shit out by now but <clears throat> i don't know anyway um so yeah kratom extraction like all acid base extractions will follow the same basic process you dissolve it in the acid media and then you generally heat it up or mix it stew it for a while um if you have any goddamn sense whatsoever you will just sonicate the shit out of it the whole point is to break open the plant cell walls and expose its contents to the, the liquid medium so you can extract it out of it um i mean you can take plant matter and you can freeze it in liquid nitrogen and grind it up and this lets you do that without having to heat the sample up at all um um, and so it was a very non-destructive way. They do that with like all, like natural products, R&D and stuff. Um, although, 
as an aside, well, well no, I won't extract it here. I'll mention it later. Um, so yeah, uh, so you've extracted it out in the acid medium using sonication or some other method to facilitate extraction, because um, it's the goddamn 21st century and sonicators are cheap. Just use one already. Um, then you will course strain out the solid matter you may wish to extract the solid matter a second time since the extraction of the alkaloid from the plant matter is an equilibrium process i really hope you know what that means um i mean you're supposed to be chemists i'm just saying um so you know i mean you're gonna want to do it more than once if you're talking about an equilibrium process the general rule of thumb is you do it three times now, am I going to extract this three times? No. Okay? Mainly because I've never done that before. I've extracted it twice at the most. I have found that in my little lab here, I'm not able to get so much out of the second extraction that it's terribly meaningful. Um it's kind of on the hairy edge of whether or not it's worth it given the amount of resources it has to go into getting it back out of there and then processing it all. Um, you can get a lot of it the first time. But like I said, if you're doing this for some in some way that you're going to make money, do it more than once. Um, it won't change the identity of the alkaloid extract, nor will it change dramatically the proportions. Plus... I was asked to re replicate by the process that I've done in the past, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. Um, now, once you have extracted it out, you've removed the solid matter, you defat the mix, okay? This is to get all of the plant fats, of which there are many, out of the mix, okay? If you don't do this, your final pro alkaloid extract is not going to be some beautiful, thick, yellowish oil. It is going to be this brown gunk. It's going to stink, it's going to taste like ass, and it and be impossible to consume. I don't care what kind of drugs are in it. <laughs> it's really... Take it from somebody who's been fooling with AB extraction for a very long time. It is fucking gross, okay? You can't sell that. No human being would want to buy that. Um, anyway, so yeah, yeah. Um, defatting it, you can, and I have experimented with Kratom, and I'm going to let you in on something here, because you guys paid me pretty good. Um, you can defat it with dichloromethane. You can use the exact same solvent all the way through this extraction. You don't have to use a different one. Now, that being said, it was not an ideal defatting agent, okay? Ideally, you want to go with some kind of... I, I, I really like the heptane ether mix that I've used up until now. It gives incredibly good results. Hexane would work, but I mean, you want to have a little ether in there because ether is a little polar and that polarity does help a little bit. You know, it's a very mild polarity, which can help with those things that have mild polarity. Um, other things I have tried that have worked. Toluene will work. Also xylene. But these are bad choices. These are what you use when you don't really have anything else because every, no matter what the solvents are, every trace of them has to be removed before you, you know, you go to evaporate down the final dichloromethane extract, okay? Toluene and xylene have high boiling points. It, it takes a lot of heating under vacuum to get rid of every bit of them and they are carcinogenic you really do want to get absolutely as much as possible of those things out of there so do they dissolve in water to any great extent no but they do a tiny bit a little bit and that's what makes them troublesome heptane and ether are not toxic in and of themselves i wouldn't consume i mean the ether is, is definitely non-toxic ish but the heptane uh, probably not the best thing um so anyway defatted it 
you're going to want to defat it with, you know, whatever you ch solvent you use, you're going to want to do this to about three times. Equilibrium process. And then once it's defatted, we're going to make it alkaline with whatever base you like, but I always use sodium hydroxide, until it has a pH of about 9 to 9.5. Nine okay? Then we're going to extract it with dichloromethane three times because it's an equilibrium process okay and then we're going to try the dichloromethane I like using anhydrous magnesium sulfate although anhydrous sodium sulfate also works okay and I mean you, you just you add some in there and you swirl it until it doesn't clump anymore I, I mean anyway um, I'll demo this. I'll show you. Um, this is just real basic stuff. Um, so anyway, once you've filtered off the clumpy drying agent and you have your beautiful dried pure dichloromethane extract of the alkaloids, you can remove the vast amount of the dichloromethane just by simple distillation. That's it's all you need to do. You don't need to do it under vacuum and lose most of your DCM. You can just do a simple distillation and remove the vast majority of the solvent and it will work just fine. Um, you do want to evaporate the last little bit off under vacuum. And just to make sure, because it is an oil, the pure alkaloid extract is a, usually like a yellowish oil, um, you're going to want to make sure you let it sit there under vacuum for a little while so that you can get every bit of the solvent out of it. Then you have a couple choices at this point. Getting it out of the apparatus like this is not going to happen. You're just going to lose alkaloid all over the place. I always dissolve it in a little bit of absolute ethanol. And then I use, I'll take the ethanol extract, you know, the ethanol solution of the pure alkaloids. And then I drip this onto common table sugar. Just a little bit of table sugar in a dish. Drip the, alcohol, the ethanol solution of the alkaloids onto it sure it's nice and mixed up like I said absolute ethanol works great here because it will not dissolve the sugar <coughs> then you just dry it under vacuum and voila you will have nice crunchy dry free flowing you know, nice um, slightly light like a like a light beige powder it does not smell bad it does not taste like ass um, it is sweet and then has like a bitter aftertaste from the alkaloids. Um, kind of like, you know, chewing up a Percocet, but not, 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 you know, not that bad. Uh, it's, it's actually very mild. Um, the mild is the word I keep coming up with to describe it. You know, it's kind of planty, kind of sweety. But it's mild. So, I mean, you know, you can consume it and you don't feel like you have to like, drink, you know, an entire pot of coffee just to get rid of the taste. Um, I don't know. I mean, I, the, I mean, with it on sugar, you could, I don't know, beats me. I had somebody talk about Kratom lollipops once. I guess. I don't know. Um, I mean, I, I just, I'm going to warn you. This urban myth that kratom alkaloids, you can't overdose on them, is just fucking foolish and stupid. Because, people, you absolutely can. Alright? I mean, you can take all of the alkaloids and a kilo of kratom, and you can easily extract that out and condense that down to a, a, a little pile of powder that you can comfortably hold in your hand and pop in one go. That's all the alkaloids from a kilo hitting you all at once. There's no... you The raw plant powder, it takes a long time for the alkaloids to leach out of that in your gut and get into your system. I have a cup of kratom tea has a very... You know, the concentration of alkaloid in that is not super high. This is the pure shit that you just popped in and you are going to be absorbing it very quickly compared to any other form of Kratom. And, yeah, 
You get somebody that's a low body weight, is opioid naive. Um, I mean, I, I don't even care if it's only a partial agony. I don't care if it's like buprenorphine, okay, which is a very safe opioid itself. There is a dose of it at which it will be toxic. I don't know what that is. And that's why I have never made Kratom alkaloid extracts and sold them myself. Because how do you not get sued when somebody inevitably ends up injuring themselves, they poison themselves with the goddamn shit from eating too much, and they overdose? What are you going to do? I mean, even if the law doesn't come and pick you up, like even if you don't get a, the state doesn't arrest you, the family will sue you. Like how do you how does that even work? I don't know. I just, you know, it, it's it's one of those things where it's like, could I have made a shitload of money doing this? Well, clearly, clearly, I could be raking in the cash right now selling kratom alkaloid extracts just to have it all be gone later on when some kid gets a hold of it and dies. So, to anybody that thinks, is, is thinking about doing this, I mean, if you're, you know, if you're a business, I hope you got some lawyers that can explain to you how that'll work. I, mean, I don't know how it works. I'm not, a, I'm, I'm not a lawyer. I'm a chemist. I have no idea. <laughs> I just, I have the foresight to be able to look at that and go, hmm, how does this look like it's going to go in the long term? I don't see how this doesn't end in lawsuits. And all of the money that I could make, I would probably end up losing a lot of it, if not most of it, or, it, you know, lose so much money that I end up in negative numbers. I mean, you can go into debt from these kinds of things. I, I don't know. I don't know how it works, so that's why I never did it. So, anyway, let's get on with it. Okay, so I was given samples of three different kinds of kratom that are just labeled red, white, and green. Um, okay, <laughs> I, I mean there are definitely different shades. I don't really know what the name, what these color names signify, but okay. Um, so what I was asked to do was to create a, an, an extract um, from these samples here to such that the person that is asking me to do this can compare their extraction that they get in their labs with the one that I've done and I guess compare the results of the two. Um, since we know my extraction method works, since we've had somebody that has tried it numerous times and has been increasingly pleased with the results, um, I mean, I guess that, that does make sense to do. Um, Clearly, if you can get the same thing that I'm getting here, you're going down the right road to have a product that you'll be able to market. Um, now, I was told to do a mix of all three of these. Um, I guess that's how they're selling it, is a, 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 a mix of all three different kinds is supposed to be more potent. I mean, of course, I can't speak to that. That may or may not be true for all I know. Um, it's certainly possible that you may have more or of an alkaloid than one that's not in another one, and they act together synergistically. Who the hell knows? Um, it's all the same to me. So what I'm going to do is just... Well, what I've got here is about 600 mils, or you know, roughly, of distilled water whose pH I have adjusted to 4 as measured by pH paper. Um, I lowered the pH just using plain old hydrochloric acid. Nothing fancy there. Um, we want to keep every, you know, production costs as low as possible while still obtaining a very high quality product. So... This is the green stuff. I don't think that looks green. That looks, well, I guess it's kind of green-ish. Nah, that shit is yellow. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> All right. Again, I don't know. I don't know where these names come from. Yep, definitely. I just added a little bit more HCl to this. It's all reacting. So, 
this is a problem, guys, because I don't have a way of testing the pH of this stuff um, past creating a solution that is at the correct initial pH. You would need, like, an electronic pH meter. You would have to immerse it in this, you know, immerse the probe into this and measure the pH in real time as it's changing so that you can adjust it accordingly um, in order to get it to the optimal pH for sonication. So... I'm with the what I've got here I'm kind of limited in what I can do so far as that goes all I can do is just go through the motions and try to compensate but it's a bit of a shot in the dark y'all um I'm not gonna lie this is unexpected because no other kratom powder I've ever extracted has done this like this before so it's a little weird to me um but I mean you know, I just want to make sure y'all are aware of all the facts. That's really, really strange. Okay, so we are ready to start the sonication here. And... Okay, as usual, sorry for the weird angle and the glare from the sun just at this time of day. It's what I have to deal with. Um, so now that we have our filtered acid extract, you can see it's not going to filter completely clear, and that's fine. It doesn't really matter if you have some solid particulates in it. Um, you do want to try to keep them to a minimum, but I mean, it's almost impossible to get them all out unless you, you know, go to extreme measures to do it. I haven't found that it is strictly necessary, um, but, you know, you may want to modify your process as you see fit. So we're going to take our organic solvent here and we're going to add just a, we want to get a decent layer on there. Something about like that-ish. Okay. All right, so now what we're going to do is extract out all of the plant fats, which will dissolve in the organic phase, because in an acid pH, they are more or less nonpolar-ish. You can see we, we start picking it up right away. The organic layer should be clear. Let it settle there for a second. But you can see how it's starting to pick up crap there. I hope. Focus, you piece of shit. You see that? There, some of that is just water that's gotten trapped in there. But I, I can only conclude that some of it must be the plant fats because it does this every single time. Um, you don't want to shake it so violently that you create an emulsion. That is never a good thing. Um, creating an emulsion will make your life an absolute pain in the ass. Um, and a lot of times, the quickest way to break them is just to centrifuge the shit out of everything. Um, that might be tedious, but it works. And at least you're not, you know, having to add all kinds of shit into it and go into all this, you know, hassle. It can take forever trying to break the stupid emulsion if you create one. So, yeah, if you do or if your process does, please just centrifuge it because then you can break the emulsion completely in a matter of minutes. So, I am just going to keep doing this process. I'm going to do this three times. So, after this, after I swirl this around a few more times, I'm going to um, drain out this into that bowl. That's what that bowl in the background is for. Um, I'm going to discard the organic layer. I'm going to add a fresh amount, you know, about the same amount of fresh organic solvent into there. And um, 
repeat, I'm going to do this process a total of three times. And like I said, you do want to swirl it several times, you know, let it settle, swirl it some more, let it settle. You want to make sure you get your money's worth out of your organic solvent. Now, you're doing this as an industrial process. Obviously, you can recycle the solvent. As I've said before, heptane and ether gives me fantastic results, although I am doing this with toluene because it is the only thing I have right now. Um, supply issues suck. I, I hate COVID. Anyway, um, so, I mean, you can do it with toluene. It is not a stellar choice just because it's much harder to evaporate all of it off, even though only a tiny amount will get transferred over. It's still a pain in the ass, and absolutely every fucking last trace of toluene has to be removed. Um, you cannot sell a product with toluene in it. I mean, ether and heptane, trace amounts of that are not going to be super harmful. I mean, I don't know. Heptane is kind of like gasoline, but it should ev evaporate a lot easier. Um, he he toluene, rather, um, has a fairly high boiling point, which is why it sucks. <laughs> But like I said, I've done it before, I know it works, so that's what I'm doing here. Just FYI, full disclosure. Okay, I just wanted you all to see, I mean, this is just from the first defatting extraction, and you can also all, already see all the crap that's accumulated um, in the toluene. And you can see we've got all this white shit here and this was in the one that was more or less clear over here where there was still a lot of residual um plant matter that had just gotten through the filter um you can see it tends to accumulate there and i think that color is coming from that that's not uh, the alkaloid that's coming from the probably the chlorophyll that's in there or some other compound that's in the residual plant matter um if it was the alkaloids it would be happening over there as well so anyway just fyi i wanted you to see that i'm trying to include every little detail about this process all right so here is our defatted extract you will note that there are no over here there's no oil slick on the surface of the um the liquid here uh you don't want to get any you know if you well what no matter what you use um you don't want to let any of that get into um, the mix once you have completely defatted it so like i said this has been defatted did it exactly as i described so i'm gonna turn on the stirring now and now we are going to add sodium hydroxide very slowly we don't want to make it super alkaline we're shooting for a ph of about nine so we're going to add a little bit check it add a little bit check it as i recall there is always a color change in the solution um that happens once it gets to well once it becomes alkaline turns almost a kind of yellowy green color if I remember right you can see we're starting to get a bit of a color change here already which is perfect okay. let's hope I didn't overshoot it what do we got what do we got ah perfect damn let's see here And we're going to compare it here. If it's out of focus, I'm sorry. Okay, so see that? I think that is our closest match. So we're right at about nine ish. Um, this is ideal. And you notice we got that color change right as it got to the right point. That's how I knew to stop. Um, yeah, I mean, you can use some analytical instrumentation to see, you know, like if going with a higher pH up to 10. If that does anything, all I know is that the person that I've made this stuff for before, when I sent him a batch of stuff that I made at a pH of 10 versus pH of 9, he said the stuff that was made at a pH of 9-ish was the stuff that was best.
um, makes sense. Uh, you do want to try to be careful because, I mean, kratom alkaloids are pretty chemically complex. So they may react um, unfavorably with concentrated alkali. So yeah, pH is, controlling your pH is very important. And you saw it only took a little bit of sodium hydroxide. It does not take a lot. Don't overshoot it. Less is more. Now, what we're going to do is we are going to do extraction on this, except now we're going to use dichloromethane as the solvent. Um, once we've done that, the aqueous layer will be garbage, and our DCM extract is what we will be working from. Um, we're pretty close to the end here now. I'm really hoping that I can get this done in time so I have time to distill it the same day. If I don't, I have done stability tests with it over the short term and the past, and I know that if it stays a couple days at pretty cool temperatures, which given that it's at the end of January, that's not a tall order, um, that it's perfectly fine. So, um, I mean, the, the process does kind of lend itself to having to, if you have to stretch it out over a few days, it's okay. The number one thing you would want to be careful in that case, make sure it doesn't start to mold. You got to keep it cold or else if it starts to mold, you must discard it. Mycotoxins are nothing to be fucked with. All right, it may that mold may be harmless. Who the hell knows what it is? It could be something that's put something really nasty into there. So yes, if you get mold at any point, you must discard everything.